All right, so this is a slight different type of video. I didn't film the actual repair because I didn't have the time to do it, but we're going to do a quick summary video of it. I did do a couple of quick short TikTok or uh, YouTube shorts of it, so check those out at a later point. But we're going to kind of see what was going on with this and what we did just as a final wrap-up video of it, a little summary video. All right, the issue arised because of this bottom portion of the valley not being done right the flashing was just bad the sloppy cut it was a pain the hardest part well first off a couple of tips we're going to talk about tips in this if you are going to do a repair one of the first things you want to do is make sure the shingles are able to be split apart some shingles are so tough let me go up somewhere i haven't touched like right here you can take a flat bar you can use your fingers <clears throat> sometimes um, tamco not usually an issue at least the old ones you can just lift up and if they pull apart okay they're pretty good if you're not sure get a flat bar and just kind of chip gently at it and see if it splits apart okay it's okay if you get a slight bit of mat transfer you just need to be able to split them without damage and then make sure the shingles are able to be a little pliable some of this bit of people saying too brittle that's just kind of a joke but uh, make sure they're, they're able to you know, split apart. Because at some point, you're going to have to terminate and tuck under. And there's nothing worse than trying to tuck under this and you tear that. And then you flat bar this out and you tear that. And the process repeats. Next thing you know, you've done the whole thing. <clears throat> so a few tips on that. Also, making sure you have the right tools. Like uh, something like this. You're going to use a little uh, um, palm nailer little hand magnet to collect your nails, tarps to cover concrete, things like that. Do your best to try to be careful on traffic. This is an older oxidized asphalt shingle and it doesn't take much traffic to kind of pull the granule off because it's already over 20 years old. Cushions are a huge help to protect the roof. Also gripping something pitchier like this. All right, so what we did is we started flat bar in the high side of the valley because I got to get the lower portion of this valley out. So you got to go high enough up on the high side to get this lower portion out some of the shorts were of this <clears throat> remove it down far enough to get the affected area out and in this case from the transition down was not quite a full sheet of wood it was about 38 38 inches i think and all the way back up under the return it was hard to get up under here but you can see where i kind of came down to about this portion fix the wood i did a short on that from in the attic making sure you take your time to get it all out don't just let it free float in there and be junk cobbled mess once the decking's done, when I do repair work, I usually use ice and water to lap over. It's important to laps over your work. As you're coming up like this, this is another important one. When you're done, make sure your pattern's offset far enough. Some of them I had to trim because the roofer did not offset them far enough. But then make sure if you split this portion over a little bit to get this in and flat barred and everything, you put a couple dabs of sealer because your old shingles are never going to stick down here. The new shingle is a bottom seal, so it's all going to stick. It's going to lay over and stick to this. Now, however, this one, the old one, whether it's top seal, bottom seal, whatever it was, it's old, it's dry, it's never going to reseal. If you don't put a couple dabs to seal it, it will eventually flap in the wind and blow loose and crease. So just make sure that's another little thing you do if you're doing repair work. Now, as far as the repair and the flashing side of this, cut the caulking, remove it, and yes, I did leave a little part visual, uh, visible with a web coming down purposely because this row here is a solid shingle all the way over. If you go under here, you can see the siding trim they have here, but then there's also step flash up under there. It was all nailed beyond the J-channel. I could not adjust that, but they were all perfectly for the 5 and 5 eighths exposure, so it's good. You didn't need to adjust them. If it was a uh, five inch exposure reveal here and you're going to five and five eighths the step flashing is going to adjust and you can't slide them manipulate them you may need to add a piece every now and then i've talked about that before <clears throat> i did have to pop this soffit piece out that's why this is a little bit bent right here i had to pull this down to get it out i notched that so i can get it uh, bent and tucked back up in there but the reason i left that webbed is because this row coming over is under the step flashing that one up there is too but just in the very rare case water is going to run down and miss the one up above there because those did go all the way up i wanted to have not this piece start here and go up i wanted to hang it down a little further and i left a web you could have cut this and tucked it under but then again if you did that that now slices this nail here and a tip when you're trying to run up under a tight area, you do it to where your nailer and your palm nailer can't reach, and then you can stagger out a little bit of full shingles up under there. Then from there, 
that was doubled up. You may not be able to see it, but there's another piece on it to go higher. Another piece of flashing up in there. There is flashing behind the fascia metal coming up on the roof deck and bends down over these pieces. That goes past the transition. This goes under. Another piece of flashing I believe I put up on top of that. You can't see it, it's up under there. Ice and water extended under the old valley on top of the row of shingles. And then to make it a little more rigid, instead of leaving the web of ice and water, I took a shingle like this. It doesn't always have to be the pattern you're installing. If you need to lace a few, you can lay one in there. It extends it. It gets any water rush in the valley down past those pieces. I put another piece of drip edge like they had. I had to replace it. I had to cut it right here. Actually, you can see the one that was there is behind the gutter. Mine's over it. Then, this shingle right here is down over the ice. So if anything comes in off of it, it's going to be on the ice because that's the valley ice and water extended. The shingle starter, obviously it's got to be under this. It's already sticking down pretty good. It crosses over under this row of shingles. You can see it there. So it is laced with that one. This shingle completely crosses over back to this one crossing over and finish the low side then your california valley shingle goes in keep in mind keep your nails out of the valleys from that point it continued on the top side cover of the california valley <clears throat> confident 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 that this is fine and okay also another point some of these may fracture just a little bit from manipulating them if that tab is loose make sure you put a small dab of sealer under there and squish it back down otherwise it will continue to crack in rare cases well not rare cases if you're careless in the whole brittle brittleness you can't lift it up high enough some guys will literally bend those fuckers all the way up oh it's brittle i can't repair this that's excessive and there's this tool called the snake and whatever honestly if you can just get under a shingle, is that one I did? Yeah, you can see I sealed it under there. GSL 4500. Let's find one I didn't do. One of these that's loose already. You can gently, now if it's stuck here and you lift this, you're gonna probably crease or crack that. You may have to split this a little bit further to allow that to come up enough. Make sure you're offset far enough. You don't wanna shoot near the keyway, but you can shoot in there. When you're done, put a couple little dabs of sealer, squish it down. Again, the brittle test. In some cases, yes. Now, if you're using a brand new roof and you're gonna try to fold it up, it has to be able to go up enough to successfully strike it with a hammer or use a pneumatic and shoot it down and then seal it. But some of these guys, they're a little excessive. Look, I'm gonna bend it back 180 degrees. Yeah, of course it's gonna snap. If it does crease completely through, not just the top, but the entire shingle, then yes, that's compromised and gonna be an issue. I hope these uh, oh, notifications popping up. Videos do help you. I, like I said, I got to get ready to clean up the ground and head back home to get to the bus stop, get my little one off. So I didn't have time to fiddle with it. Honestly, this had been a, a big lengthy repair, very long. That's why I'm trying to do short little clips throughout. So if you like this style, let me know. I'll try to do more of them. And if you're watching this and haven't seen the others, check the shorts, the playlist shorts. Watch those there. Check on TikTok, Grand Roofing Clips. Might post a few there. As always, until next time, be safe. See you on the next one.